Okay. So basically, we could stop right here, find u1 of x, u2 of x, and then we build our particular function by multiplying u1, y1, u2 times y2. So let's do let's do an example where we actually just use this. Okay. So this is the result. So we will get to use a Ron scan, and then hopefully, time permitting, we're going to do an example, and then I'm going to show you another reason to use maple. Okay? So you don't want to do this by hand every time, do you? Yeah. slow to get to the technology like that as well. Um, so let's look at an example. So what I want to normally write out is that, yeah, do not memorize process. So that proof, that derivation that I went through, you're not going to start from ground zero and do that for every particular problem. So you're just going to go to the general form. Okay. So let's do an example and show how to do that. Um, say we got a second order, y double prime plus y equals secant x. And that's another one whose derivatives just never stop going. They just and they change. They're different every time. They don't repeat. So we wouldn't use undetermined coefficients in there. All right, so what we're going to do is, well, first, consider the homogeneous equation, right? y double prime plus y equals 0. And uh, what would the characteristic equation be? r squared plus 1. r squared plus 1 equals 0. So our solutions for r would be plus or minus 1i. So our, uh, our solution for y complement would be c1 cosine, uh, the imaginary part is just 1, so 1i, one or not i, but 1x, c2 sine x. Okay? So this is, these are our y1s and y2s are in the complementary function. Okay? They're linearly independent. So both solutions to the homogeneous equation. Okay. And uh, we will be seeking u1 of x and u2 of x to form um, a particular solution. I'm dropping the x's, but these are product of functions. So not an exact linear combination because u1 and y and u2 are not necessarily constants. Okay. So um, let's start off by finding the Ronskin. We got our y1, y2. <clears throat> so our Ronskin cosine sine. And their derivatives, cosine is negative sine. Sine is cosine. All right, and Ronskin. So product of diagonals this way, cosine squared. Minus, and we're going to have negative sine squared. Oh, awesome for us. Because we get cosine squared plus sine squared. One. Okay, good. So that's our Ronskin. Lucky. So our... Uh, u1 of x, right, is that giant integral negative 
integral y2, I'll write it out again, y2 times f of x over Ronskian. In this case, we're lucky, the Ronskian is just 1, so I get negative integral, and y2 is sine x, and f of x is secant x. Dx. Now I hope what's what's secant? One over cosine. So this is sine over cosine. Tangent. And tangent does have a derivative. Turns out it's negative natural log cosine x. You can verify it by differentiating this. Natural log, derivative of natural log is 1 over cosine times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, so that negative makes up for it, but that's a negative out front. So we get natural log cosine x. Okay, that's our u1. Uh, and u2 is uh, similar. The reason they have opposite signs. It's kind of strange that they have opposite signs, right? Wouldn't it be the same process? Okay, but if you look in this, in this uh, system of equations, you have a plus in between these that equals zero. So if you get this over to the other side, u1 prime y1 equals negative u2 prime y2. So it introduces an opposite factor, which is why one of these is negative and the other is not. Okay. All right, so our u2, u2 of x, will be integral of, uh, what is it, y1 times f of x over the Ronskian. And uh, y1 is what? Cosine. So cosine x times f of x is secant. And secant is 1 over cosine. Yeah, we get integral of 1 dx <clears throat> equals x. All right, now, you might be wondering why I have to attack on a constant. Okay? <clears throat> it turns out, and we'll talk about, hopefully we'll talk about why. Um, <clears throat> we can take the constant of integration equals zero. The question is why is that? We'll address that. Okay? We'll address that. So I can take it equals zero there as well. Okay? And we'll get to that asterisk point. Alright, so there's our u1 and u2 of x. So this makes our particular solution is what, u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2, and we just found u1 and u2, u1 is natural log cosine x, times y1, which is cosine x, plus u2 times y2, y2 is sine of x. All right. So that's our particular solution. And I'm not going to write it out just for the sake of time. General solution Put those in there, and we got our general solution to the entire equation. Okay. Um, so let's talk about that little business. Why I can drop? Why we can drop that uh, constant of integration? So just, just in this case, say we picked up a constant C and we call that one D. So 
So there's my constant of integration. Uh, and say u1 of x was natural log cosine x plus d, okay, non-zero. Then our uh, particular solution, right, u u1 y1, it would be u1 is right there, natural log cosine x plus d times, so u1 times y1, and y1 was cosine x, plus u2 times y2, and y2 is sine x. Okay, distribute these. I would get natural log x, or natural log cosine x times, cos uh, times this cosine x, right? And I'm also going to distribute the x over, and this, this sine x over to here, so I'd have plus x sine x plus d cosine x plus c sine x. So when we distribute those constants, notice right over here, I get my y sub p. But this, this, this is covered. This is already covered in the y sub p. This is unnecessary. By that logic, then, you don't even have to solve for, or you probably not even solve for y sub c. It's just right there. And then wouldn't it just turn up every time? Well, no, because see, I had to know them before. This is my y1 and that's my y2. Oh, yeah. no, so I knew those, I knew those going into it. That's why they yeah, that's right. So these become useless. They would get absorbed by the, the part of the uh, complementary solution anyway. So might as well take a constant of integration to be zero each time, okay? <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna give you a reason, again, reason number two after yesterday to use maple. So you can do this one by hand. That one wasn't actually that bad because the Ronskian turned out to be one. I didn't have to do a very difficult integration. Okay, generally the Ronskian could be some function of x, and you're literally multiplying y1 times f of x in the numerator divided by the Ronskian. You could come up with something ugly, and you got to integrate that to find your u1 and u2. Okay, so let's look at a, an example. And this is one of your homework problems. So, this is uh, number 47, page 211. Is that right? 211? We're making our way through there. All right. So, we got y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals 4e to the x. So, this is our forcing function. All right, so the uh, homogeneous equation, I just do this to keep track of things in this process of, we first want to find the complementary function, so the homogeneous equation, 3y prime plus 2y equals zero. Uh, the characteristic equation, if we assume y equals e to the rx, then our characteristic equation becomes r squared plus 3r plus two equals zero. Okay, this factors nicely, r plus 2, r plus 1. So what are our solutions? Negative 2, negative 1. <clears throat> Alright, so um, what would be the form of our complementary solution? Complementary function. So yeah, those are y1 and y2. They are linearly independent right off the bat. Okay, so um, yeah, we could do this process again. I know y1, y2, I could find the Ronskian, right? 
Then um, to find u1 of x, I have negative integral y2 of x times f of x divided by the Ronsky, right? We could do the same thing, solve for y, uh, solve for u2, yeah. Is it for our, for our f of x, not, is not, is it, why do we, mm -hmm. we just use the standard form? Right, right. So this one could be covered, this could be done by... Oh, you're just doing it, yeah. possibly using the yeah, old yeah. Okay, So it works for both methods, then? Yes, this one would work gotcha. using undetermined coefficients as well. Do all of them work for undetermined No. Okay. No, that tangent x, the first example we did, would not work by undetermined coefficients. Uh. So no, some of them could be done both ways. All the ones that could be done using, uh, all the ones using undetermined coefficients could be solved this way, but not necessarily the other way around. Not necessarily the other way around. You could do them all this way, but you can't do them all using a uh, method of undetermined coefficients. All right, oh, so this guy, this was the first one we did. Y1 equals cosine x, Y2 was sine x. This is a template. And I'm going to post this online. Um, our f of x, that's our forcing function, tangent x. So this is our first example we did by hand. Now, um, this calculates the Ronsky. y1 times the derivative of y2 minus y2 times the derivative of y1. Then it simplifies the Ronsky. And then it finds the particular solution by doing that integration. And all I have to do is hit enter. <laughs> okay. Oh, I the mothership. Okay, there we go. So it gave it to us in a slightly different form, the uh, particular solution that we that we got. It was cosine. It was natural log of cosine x. This is just y sub p. So not the general solution. This is our y sub p particular solution. change this up. The good thing about this template is you can change it up. So let's do the function, the one that we just talked about. And what we want to do with this is find a particular solution. This is already just a template. It's built for you. All you need to do is put in our y1, y2, which we just found. So y1 is e, and it's written e x e, exponential function e to the negative 2x. And you, it's very picky. You've got to put the times in between everything, negative 2 times x. All right, and our y2. Our y2 is very similar form. It's just e to the negative 1x. Okay. And our forcing function, f of x, was what? Yeah, I think I got this copied in here. So let's do it again. So this is our forcing function. These are the only things I have to change. It was e to the 4 e to the x, really. So 4 times e to the x. And this simplifies the particular solution. That's all we got. Uh, oh, sorry. Wait. That's a that's the uh, uh, colon equals, which is just an assignment operator. So it is four. Okay. All right. So, um, one minute left. What can we do? Um, just kidding. All right, we're not going to do anything. Uh, so, for Tuesday.
So uh, for Tuesday, section 3.5 homework. Um, now we've got both of those undetermined coefficients for varying the parameters. That maple is going to be posted. It's under it's in our course files under uh, technology demos. It's a template. You can change it and run it. So try a couple problems by hand, and you can check it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the way it simplifies things may give you a different looking expression than the one you get. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong. It may be an equivalent expression that's just simplified differently. Okay. All right. Um, and anything else? Oh, the next problem set. That's number six coming. Did you guys just turn in six today? Five. No, five. five today. Yeah. It'll be online in my PCC uh, by tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Isn't today the day the project of some sort gets? Uh, right. That's gonna. We're gonna talk about it next week. It's probably uh, probably Tuesday, but it's not gonna be terribly long. It's gonna be a couple, you know, more involved problems as opposed to just here's a topic and you know do this whole thing. But it's gonna be a couple a couple problems, two to three problems, okay, multiple parts. Uh, so we will talk about the project. That's still gonna happen. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Okay.